Tag. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been an honor to be part of the Elevate Festival 2020, and it's also very exciting for me to be in Graz for the very first time. Our environment is being stripped of its precious components day by day. Despite Mother Nature's severe warnings that we need to start treating her right. Having grown up in the most forested region in Kenya, I got to love and connect most with the forest landscape. And what hurts the forest and what hurts nature hurts me too. Humanity has been at war with nature for a very long time now. And nature is now hitting back. And now all this burden has been left to the children and the young people to figure it out by themselves. We are now at the brink of a severe environmental crisis which requires our urgent attention. From the dangerous climate tipping points, a mass extinction, more plastic in the ocean than fish by the year 2050, and right now air pollution has also become a leading public health crisis that is leading to the death of over 6.5 million people globally each year. Deforestation has also continued to have a significant impact on climate change. We always hear about the wild forests, such as the Amazon, causing alarm around the world. But we hardly hear about Africa's tropical forests that are also equally important and are also under threat. West Africa and the Congo Basin are hotspots for forest loss, but they receive lower global attention and the same trend is also happening to our voices as the young climate activists from the global south, despite being in the front line of the climate disasters. Which is why I do not take it for granted being here tonight to represent these millions of voices that still go unheard up to date. The climate crisis in Africa is not a future concern. It is happening now, and we live by it every day. The situation is worse because it is not about the physical reality, but it's more of the loss of lives and livelihoods, displacement of people after floods, landslides, cyclones, droughts, or even storms. As I speak, swarms of desert locusts have now invaded the East African part of, uh, of Africa. And this year, uh, the year 2019 was warmer than all the previous years before. And this desert locust invasion for my country, Kenya, is the worst in 70 years. And this, of course, presents an unprecedented threat to our food security. And also towards the end of last year, we had floods and a lot of landslides that left most people in the African and mostly East African continent, losing their lives and also their livelihoods. The chances of a safe future with the current trends of a world that is not even livable are minimal. And this, is not, and this worries me a lot, and it also makes me angry at the same time. Do we have to beg for a livable world now? Do we even have to beg for a safe future? I do not think that we need to be begging for it because we deserve it and it's our right. As the impacts intensify over time, we the young people and children of today will face the worst impacts and will also have to live longer with the consequences of the world's inaction today. But then we refuse to give up without a fight. We who see the urgency will continue to rise up, act, speak up, and demand for urgent climate action. We aren't asking for a favor in fighting the climate crisis. It is our right. I always love to share and inspire people through my childhood story and my journey as an environment and climate activist. When I was seven years old, I was determined to change the world and it always broke my heart when I saw or read about how the wild forests were being burned down and destroyed at alarming rates. And just how our rivers, lakes, and oceans were becoming a soup of poison flowing with plastic waste. 
and how the children in different parts of the world were being forced to put on pollution masks just to go to school because of how bad the weather was being polluted. My mom used to tell me that if you don't like something, then change it. Take action and don't complain. So I started planting trees and preaching the gospel of planting trees with my age mates. And of course, inspired by the late Nobel laureate, Professor Angari Mathai, who at that point in time was a member of parliament from my home region. My job was to make them learn about the importance of planting trees. When I look back now, I am grateful for the tiny little deeds that we did, because were it not for that experience, I would never have found my passion, and that is my love for nature. In 2016, I founded Green Generation Initiative to nurture more young people and children to love nature, connect to nature, and be conscious of the environment at a young age, and of course, inspired by my childhood. Despite being the most vulnerable, I do believe that children and young people have a space, a voice, and can lead up the fight against the climate crisis. And therefore, the voices of these young people and the children must stop being ignored. Through Green Generation Initiative, I have been implementing practical environmental and climate education sessions in schools, instilling a tree-growing culture among the children through a campaign that I dubbed Adopt a Tree Campaign, where we ensure that every child in every school gets a chance to plant and adopt a tree each in their school compound. And this, of course, helps in increasing the forest cover and at the same time connects these children back to nature. Because a lot of millions of trees are being planted in the world today. But the big question is, how many of these trees actually get to grow? So we are therefore going beyond planting trees and we are focusing on growing trees for impact. We are also establishing food forests where we grow mixed types of fruit trees in schools to enhance food security, because these fruits help facilitate the school's feeding programs at the end of the day. Five years into existence, I have seen what raising environmental awareness through education can do. And tonight, I pass the baton to, uh, the baton to you. A livable world now and a safe future is your birthright. And when that is denied, you rise up and demand for it. We must not remain silent. We must hold every generation accountable of how they leave this planet for the next generations. We have been pushed into this battle to end a crisis that we did not even create ourselves. But we have to keep fighting. This is my generation's future that is at stake. And if you're not with us, then you are definitely against us. And as I conclude, Albert Einstein once said that the world will not be destroyed by those who do evil, but it's going to be destroyed by those who watch and do nothing. We have no time left. We who see the urgency must not give up. We have to keep up the fight because no one is going to come and save us. It is time to design a world that also addresses the urgent needs of the poor and refuse that which only preserves the way of life of the rich at the expense of the poor and the most vulnerable. Ladies and gentlemen, we are all empowered to make a difference, empowered to make a change. We will because we can, and we will because we are action. I am Elizabeth Wathuti, an environment and climate activist from Kenya, the founder of Green Generation Initiative. I am, and I will always be, a woman of the earth. Thank you very much. <laughs>